I remember years ago working as a teacher in the province of Alberta, Canada, and the government actually shared a new vision for education. And I'm not going to lie to you, I was shocked. It was really, really good. And the reason I was shocked is that it came from the government. And often there seems like a disconnect between what is said at the government level to what is actually happening in the classrooms. So I worked with a ton of teachers who were really excited about it. I remember our, our, our administrators were really excited about it. And it was something we could really get behind. And so we're working towards this vision and just thinking how beneficial it will be to our students. And then actually a new person came in to that role in the government and immediately everything was gone. And it wasn't a new party. Uh, it actually was a new government. It was just a new person. And it really bothered me because I thought we were in such a good direction. And I will be honest with you, it actually has biased me quite a bit in kind of how I see the connection between um, governments and you know what happens in education. And I wrote about this in What Makes a Great Principal. And here's what I share. Too often we want to push our own personality onto a new school community and not embrace any of the things that have been done in the past that are good. This is actually a move that politicians make and why many people are increasingly frustrated with governments around the world. A new person is elected and wants to undo everything that was done prior because keeping it might be an omission that the last person did some things well. So I share this with you all today because I was very pleasantly surprised when I actually was able to work with the commissioners of education for the state of Missouri. Not only the current commissioner of education as of recording this, but the incoming uh, commissioner of education for the state of Missouri. And what I, why I got to speak to them is because they're actually working together with the transition and their focus is how do they actually create some continuity? How do they ensure that the great things that have been done in the past are not just discarded, but they're actually built upon while also ensuring that they're constantly evolving, constantly growing in that new role. So I kind of felt like as, and I talked about this in the podcast, I should have wrote that statement, but then put in quote in brackets, except for Missouri. So I'm really excited because I get to work with the state of Missouri uh, upcoming this year with their leadership teams, with their, their teaching staff and their communities, and that they have this focus on really serving um, the people who serve kids. That's something that I really appreciate about this. And I wanted to start it off uh, the podcast sharing this because I'm hoping that when I share these podcasts, my hope is that other people will see what's happening in some of these roles. And I was very nervous to um, interview these two people, but they were so approachable, so easygoing. And it just made me feel a little glimmer of hope on how we can work together to really build on the great stuff that's already happening as opposed to discarding it because it's more about a person than it is about the people. And so... This gave me some really big optimism. You're going to just totally love um, Carla and Margie. And they actually, I love, they said, call us Carla and Margie. And I just felt it was a really cool experience. And you're going to learn a lot from them, learn a lot about the great things going on in the state of Missouri. But thank you for being here. I hope you enjoy it. I loved having this podcast. It felt like a dream come true. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am very nervous and uh, I'll be honest with you because I actually have uh, Margie. Oh, now I'm like totally nervous. So I'm going to mess up your name. How do you say Van your last Deven. name? Van, Van Deven. Deven. Margie, and she is the, as we are recording this right now, is the current commissioner of education in Missouri. And then Carla Esslinger, am I saying that right? You're saying, yeah, absolutely. So Carla Esslinger. Oh yeah. yeah. So I totally screwed up already. And so I guess I got really nervous because I have the outgoing commissioner of education from Missouri, uh, the incoming education, and uh, we're going to have a debate. No, I'm just, I'm just totally kidding. They actually know each other, they're friends. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, they were like, we wanted to get all, you know, formal. And they're like, just call us Margie and Carla, like just that. And I'm like, really, this is actually, I, I feel really, I'm nervous. Because, you know, I know you have like really big roles. And so I'm really excited to have you on the podcast. Uh, I'm also very excited because I'm actually joining you with all with your leadership team um, and your teachers uh, this upcoming year. And I'm really excited because I know there's a lot of 
great things going on in Missouri right now. Hopefully I don't come there and screw everything up. So, you know, hopefully I can help in some way. But Margie, as the current, as of recording this, so when you're watching this, it could actually be different. And you said you're almost like the past president, like you're still going to be working um, with, with the commissioner's office. Um, tell us a little bit about you um, and actually how you got to the role that you're doing uh, today. Sure, thanks. I, you know, I, I've been a, was a classroom teacher for about 15 years and did a, a lot of work in the state of Missouri and also in the state of Maryland, came back and moved to Jefferson City. And I was going to take about a, a, a year off and um, got into that year and realized I wasn't really good not working. And so I uh, went to the State Department. That's what you do when you're in a capital city sometimes and thought I would just take a, a position there and uh, and then start looking for a school position when hiring season started and started that uh, the job at the department in October of 2005 at a uh, like entry level position and uh, did a lot of work with school improvement and just absolutely fell in love with the work. Uh, enjoyed looking at policy, enjoyed visiting schools all across our state and seeing how we were uh, approaching education and our very rural districts, our urban districts, our suburban districts, and what could we do at the state level to assist in those efforts? And so moved through uh, six positions being, and then, you know, ending with this role as commissioner, which has just been an absolute honor of, the, of a lifetime. Um, reached the realization that it was, it was probably time to step aside and for lots of different reasons. And um, wanted to leave while I still love the job. I still love the work that we do, and uh, couldn't tell you um, what as clearly as I could how um, relieved I was when I found out uh, that the State Board of Education um, was going to announce that Dr. Ashlinger uh, would be the the next commissioner. So really happy about the transition. I know you want to talk to her about her background, and that I, I if I'm going to say it anything about my career, it's always been that uh, I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher at heart. I see myself as a teacher and I uh, have really enjoyed being able to serve in this role. You know, the, so one, we actually had a meeting, uh, you know, kind of planning for the conferences. And I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I had like a, like a conception of like what a commissioner of education would be, how they would talk and it would all be like political and stuff like that. And it's just not my jam, you know, like I, that's not what I'm focused on. And what I really appreciate about you when you were talking, you were like so focused on how you could help kids in your, in your, your state, how you could help, you know, staff, how you could help students. And you were really focused on learning. And <laughs> this is gonna be, sound horrible. You actually like listen to insights that I shared and you were like open to them as opposed to sometimes I've talked to politicians and they're like, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care what I'd say. <laughs> they're just like, they have this thing and you're like, cause you're always, you know, you're so focused on how you can continuously serve the community. So that, that was my first impression. I was, and I was really excited about that. And then, you know, as we were kind of prepping for this and we were talking before the one of the things I loved is the transition that you the plan that you have together, because I know you know each other and that that's awesome. And I'm going to actually talk about that in a second. But before I get to that, Carla, if you can just tell us, you know, as you're coming into this role, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got to this point. Sure. Uh, started out teaching in a, a very small school district out in Theodosia, Missouri called Ludi School and uh, uh, very small. In fact, I had two rows of first graders and two rows of second graders in one room. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And, what, and how, how it goes with a small school is you end up, you know, you do everything from federal programs to any kind of special programs to coaching, to driving a bus, to whatever it is. And so I had just a great opportunity to learn various aspects of education and how we provide services to kids. Then I uh, kept going to school, principal, a couple of districts. I was also a superintendent of schools for several years. I was a curriculum instruction assessment person for a while, assistant superintendent for a while. Uh, ended up actually coming to work after I retired from my last superintendent job. Uh, I retired and went to work for the Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed here in Missouri. And that's obviously when I had this chance to work directly with Margie. So we worked together side by side, shoulder to shoulder for about four or five years. Uh, <laughs> developed a great relationship and and have been friends ever since. Um, my interim between now and when I left the department the first time, uh, I ended up working uh, for some folks who provided technical assistance to the U.S. Department of Education. So I worked out of D.C. and I also worked across the nation on various 
uh, grant programs, Race the Top District back in the day is what it was called, did a lot of uh, personalized uh, learning. Uh, had an opportunity to see not just how Missouri provides education and quality learning experiences for kids, but also got to see how they do it across the nation. So from there, I had made a promise to a guy that I absolutely loved. And, and he told me one time, he said, hey, Carly, if it, if it comes your time, you promise me you'll run. And George, I hadn't even paid attention that Missouri had term limits. And I figured the guy who's got the chair right now is healthy. I've got, I'm good for 30 years. <laughs> well, wrong. Uh, he turned out. <laughs> So uh, Maynard Wallace, and I'm sure um, some people will know who that name is. Maynard Wallace called, and I was working in Long Beach, California on a, on a project. Uh, and he called and said, hey, you're up. So I came home and, and uh, talked to my family and said I made the promise, and so I'm going to go ahead and run. So I ran for our house. I served as a house representative for the 155th district for a couple of years. And frankly, to be honest, I was ready to bail. I mean, it wasn't my gig. It wasn't my thing. Um, and then I had another group of people that came to say, hey, we really, really, really like your work as a politician, as a person that cares about our district. Um, let's go ahead and, and we really like for you to run for Senate. So I did that. I, I served four years. And I can tell you, though, that that experience gave me an opportunity to have a real uh, breadth of knowledge across the state about how truly education informs and impacts every aspect of what we do. Right, everything in any kind of economic development, any kind of like that, you know, the foundation of workforce and the quality of people that we're producing for the workforce is the key driver. Um, but I can tell you that my heart and soul has always been in and will be continuing this new role. I care about kids and I care about teachers, and I know absolutely that the most important thing that we do in the state of Missouri is put the most resource and support around those educators because they're the ones that make the biggest difference for kids and the kind of learning and the opportunity for us to see them grow. You know, so, and that, I, I really appreciate that you said that. And I would say like in my role as a, you know, principal working at central office, mm -hmm. I would say one of my faults that I've gotten better at over time was it really kind of like, hey, I always say, we always got to focus on what's best for kids, right? We got to focus on best for kids. And sometimes, it would also it would almost be like in a detriment to the adults whereas you know as i've grown and this is what i really appreciate what you just said is like if you really want to help kids you have to help the adults you have to serve the adults and make sure that they have what they need to be successful and i, I appreciate that you um ha have that focus in, in the work that you're coming into and this is actually this is this would by the way when we were talking about doing this i was like this is a little bit weird <laughs> i'm not gonna lie right Cause it's like, so like, do you, first of all, do you like each other? Like, this is kind of a weird thing that you're like, <laughs> one's taking the job and, you know, like, you know, starting the job over. And, um, I full disclosure, and I actually have this in print because you were, we were talking before and, and, and Margie and Carla told me like, basically they're working together so that, you know, Carla can build on the work that has already been done by Margie and the team before. And I, I told him I was going to read this quote because I, this is actually how I've kind of seen this before. Um, I said, too often we want to push our own personality onto a new school community and not embrace any of the things that have been done in the past that are good. This is actually a move that politicians make, I apologize, and why many people are increasingly frustrated with the governments around the new the world. A new person is elected and wants to do undo everything that was done prior because it kept keeping it might be an omission. The last person did some things well. So that has been what I've seen before, but this is a totally different, you now you, now I feel guilty for writing that. Cause I'm like, except I should have wrote in brackets, except for Missouri. Except for Missouri. It's not your education. Yeah. So why, like, why, why has this been so like, I, I am not going to lie to you. I love that. That was something that you brought up because it is something I, I remember working in Canada and one of the provinces, we had an amazing education plan done by the government. And then actually the, a new person came into the role, same party, everything. And they just undid everything. And I was like, why would you undo it? Like even, even the staff really liked what was going on here. So I love that you're saying like, Hey, we want to actually like kind of build momentum, not just kind of stop and then start something totally new. So why, why has that been so important to, this transition as you're going through. And I like, I just, I so appreciate that that is a focus of, of the work that you, the, the two of you are doing together. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll jump in on there. Um, 
for me, it was so important. I had a board member who told me a while ago uh, that that doing state government work is more like uh, running a relay race than a than uh, a sprint. Uh, you want to get things finished. You need to see things finished on your watch, and it is almost impossible. And if you do the start stop right now, the average tenure of a commissioner is less than three years. If you're doing start stop start stop start stop, you're not getting anywhere. Our job is to build the foundation, pass the baton, and let people improve upon the work that you had in place. Missouri is a little bit different in, as well in that our constitution really much spells out that we have eight board members who are on eight-year staggered terms, hmm. uh, really designed to maintain some of that sustainability. So they too have bought into this strategic plan and this visioning of what we're working to accomplish in Missouri, namely that around early learning, literacy, uh, success ready students, teacher workforce, they're all committed to that. And so they wanted to make sure that the next commissioner was also committed to those goals and continue to move forward with that, that work. Will I, do I believe that Carla will change some of the things that I did? I think she should. Uh, do I think she will do better in a lot of the things that I had than, than what I had done? But do I hope that the foundation is there so that she can pick, take the, the baton that I'm going to hand her and just go because time is short and our kids are counting on us. So I'll pass it to you, Carla, to respond to that. But uh, I, I think it's I'm really excited about the transition. You know, the work is never done in isolation. So every, you could think about the State Department as being the folks that are uh, being supportive of and, and helping to to be the compass of. But it's the the practitioners in the field. It's all the people who have given those additional Saturday afternoons or Monday out of the classroom and that have come together in various committees and groups and organizations across the state. And they, too, are pulling the same way towards these foundational pieces. And so for me to come in as a new leader and go, oh, let's put a stop and and let's start reassessing and, and re uh, uh, chat. Let's let's totally change the, the map going forward. I think it's so unfair to all the work that's been preceding me. But I do know that just Margie has a perception of things. I have a perception of things. She brings great things to the table. Other people bring great things to the table, and so, was I, and so will I. Uh, will it be exactly the same? There's always things that she would have changed if she was in this chair at the same time I'm going to. So it's not the, it's not a, it's going to be just, here's the, here's the plan, go forward, Carla. It, but it truly is going to be a build upon the good successes that have already occurred. So we don't take a back step because Margie, I love what you said, you know, our kids are waiting for us, you know, and I always like to say, you don't get to do third grade twice. So. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, that when my, when my, one of my superintendents, when I became principal, what she had shared with me was, and I, I thought about this as, as both of you are talking, she said, you know, the, the person before you was awesome. They were really, really great. And your job is to not erase what they did, but right. also like to build upon it. But also it is imperative that you leave your fingerprints in that school as well. That you, what, like the strengths and gifts that you have, they're somehow in there too. So you want to build on what's going on, but you also want to put that too, because you know that it like, it's always different perspectives, different things, but it's not to a race. It's actually to continuously grow and develop. And so that's something that transition that the two of you have, because I know it's not just uh, you're done, you're out. And then, cause you actually have a month, I think that you're all working together to kind of make sure that the transition is, I, I think what I appreciate is not just move for, you know, Carla in the role, but it's for the people you serve too, right? And kind of building on that as well. And when we were kind of talking about some of the planning, you know, uh, some of the work that we're all doing together coming up, um, there is a, I'll actually be joining you all in July, um, working with, you know, your leadership teams, but I'm also gonna be uh, in Missouri working with the teacher teams. And I, what I really appreciate about your vision is saying like, hey, we don't need a bunch of like, this person says this, this person says this, but also like, let's build upon the great stuff that it's doing, but have some consistency in messaging. And I think one of the things that I really try to bring to the table when I join you all is to share some insights, but also to create a space where you already have really great stuff going on in your state. And how do I learn from it? And how do I create a space where they learn from each other? So I know, and I'll start with you, maybe Carla on this one, there is a real focus on leader develop, leadership development and teacher development in the state like why is that so imperative and like what are some of the things that you're doing to ensure that people have what they need to you know to, to serve students 
Well, I know that Missouri has been recognized on several occasions. I don't, I can't pull up exactly the accolades, but I know that they've been recognized for the work that's being done uh, within the Office of School Educator Quality that uh, has to do with leadership. I can talk to you a little bit about, George, about the importance of leadership. Obviously, the importance is, is because we have teachers that are leaving the classroom. They're walking mm -hmm. out, or we have lots of teachers who decide, or people who decide they don't, they maybe want to be in education, but they decide not to at the last minute or whatever it is. And we have a huge void to fill. And we all have been in those situations in a classroom where you're trying to do the best you can, but maybe it's a toxic environment. You don't feel supported. Mm -hmm. You don't have the resources. You're not heard. You're not valued, whatever those things are. And a good leader is the person that is there to make sure that the teacher is prepared, has a resource, mm -hmm. has the support, is, is comfortable to do the craft, the art that we ask them to do. So absolutely, we have to pay attention to the quality of leaders and give them as much support as we can so that those toxic environments and those difficult situations that we place our educators in, that they have the resources and the support around them to be able to do the job. Um, now, Margie can talk about the specifics of the leadership training programs. I just know that it is a mm -hmm. uh, thing across the state where there is more support around new leaders and more opportunity to develop leaders in our state than we've ever had. I can tell you because I came through the programs how many years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. I was one of those brand new super, uh, principals that didn't even know, you know what key went to what door or what's going on and had all these various state reports, all these various things. And so I think we're doing a much better job with the leadership of Dr. Paul Katnick, for one, in that area uh, to drive giving, getting us good supports around educational leaders, not just principals, but also superintendents. Yeah, and the, the, you know, the, uh, there is like an old adage I'm sure you're familiar with, right? Like people don't leave bad organizations, they leave bad leaders, right? And so if you don't put people in a position where they're supporting, you know, and this is something my parents taught me running a restaurant, the, the higher you go up in any organization, the more people you serve, not the other way around. And really mm -hmm. making sure that the people um, you you actually are putting in those positions create those environments for for your staff so they can really thrive. Are you got any Absolutely. insights on that on 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 some of the stuff that's happening in Missouri with that development? Well, I, th I think Carla summarized the need really really well. I I would just add that if you talk to Paul, one of the things that are that we're really really proud of is that that last word system. This truly is a leadership development system. And when you're in a state that has 556 different local education agencies where people are moving from place to place pretty often, uh, it's much better to have a statewide systems approach. So your superintendent's looking at the same set of standards and they understand what your principals are being trained on and the principals are working with the teacher leadership system and uh, bringing together that cohesiveness um, what we have, the, the one stat that I will share with you is that we have seen, and I don't have the numbers, so that's not really a stat, but the one point I will tell you is that uh, we have seen a great decrease in our principal turnover, which I think is huge right now. Definitely. So I do agree with you, George, that people leave leaders. And I'm also going to tell you the last five years in education, it, it hasn't just been the leaders that people are leaving. It is just circumstance. It's been some challenges. Yeah. We're going to talk about that with some of the innovation that we're working with. Uh, but I do think uh, empowering your principal, in particular, the principal work has taken off uh, in a way that supports uh, what's happening in uh, in your classrooms, but overall uh, district level as well. And I just, we all know how key that really is. And one more thing, this isn't just a state education agency issue. Uh, really, to yeah. earlier points, we brought in uh, a lot of the organ ed organizations and others who are helping us and launching and running those programs. It's a grassroots as well. Okay, so I, I'm going to do a little plug here. I actually wrote a book called What Makes a Great Principal because of what you're talking about, right? Like, how do we put Yay. principal? Yeah, I, like literally that's because yeah. we know how imperative the role of the principal is to the school. And my, my argument's always been uh, they have the most authority closest to kids. So like sure. they're they're they can make things happen and you really they're really pinnacles of communities. And I, I, like I, I don't want to ever say it's the most important role in education. But, you know, if you don't really support the principal, if you don't have a great principal, that's when teachers leave or they get worse. And so I think that's that's really imperative. Um, Margie, you did. We talked about something that that's a real goal for you all um, in Missouri. And it was really interesting as you were articulating it. And it made me feel a sense of relief because it is something I will bring up to both the leadership teams and the you know teaching staff when I work with them. 
And it's, a lot of people don't like that I say this. Like my goal has never been, hey, we need to get every kid to college. That's not my goal. My goal is to help every learner. And so I, I use the term learner specifically because I'm talking about the adults as well. Help every learner find a pathway to success that is meaningful to them. And you were talking about some of that in some of the work that you're doing with students to really kind of, you know, identify where they're at right now, but also help them identify where they could go, not always like, hey, you will be successful if you do A, B, and C. It's like, how do you get the kids to actually define that success for themselves? Because that, you know, we all can define success in totally different ways and we can all reach it. And what's one successful person to another uh, is unsuccessful because that's a very personal thing. So what's some of the work that you're doing to kind of focus on how, how we help students to find that success and, you know, find it for themselves? Yeah, I think, you know, it's been really critical. We've changed our messaging here considerably to talk about and many, you know, what is it that you want to accomplish and what does it take in order to meet that pathway? So is it a four year? Is it a two year? Is it additional technical school? Is it the military? What is it that you need in order to be ready? So we designed our accountability system around that to say for some kids, it's the ACT, for some kids, it's the ASVAB, for some kids, it's a our industry recognized credential and we try to honor and recognize any of those credentials in a very similar fashion. So that's just one way from the state level. But I would say uh, another area is if you're familiar with Rooted, it's a, a program that uh, has been brought into the state the last several years uh, that has uh, placed career counselors in uh, particularly our rural schools to expose students to various careers and then helping them and sitting down and talking about what are those next step, steps. And then when they have their signing day, you know, when you have the kids get all excited about where they're going, they come in in their shirts and they're wearing like, yes, they're wearing their four-year universities, was, which is exciting, or they're wearing their military, uh, you know, mm -hmm. where they've enlisted, or they're wearing their technical trade, whatever it is, this is exciting stuff. And we recognize that. Um, but most importantly, is, as you've pointed out, George, we're preparing them um, on, on the work that makes sense to them. So right. leading in some of the uh, work apprentice, this, uh, youth apprenticeships across the nation right now, that's been really big for us working with business leaders to give kids uh, opportunities for um, apprenticeships while they're in school to see if they like it or not. I mean, those are all of those experiences really do help bring meaning to learning for students. And uh, it makes it uh, a much smoother transition for them when they exit our K-12 systems. And Carla, how, how, how is like your transition into that? Like, what are some of the things that you're doing, you're looking at in supporting some of that that work that's happening in the state of Missouri to kind of help this, um, you know, right. help these students find these pathways. Absolutely. Well, my past four, uh, six years or so uh, working under the dome and the, uh, across the street here, I mean, that has been career tech ed, workforce development, and then all the work that we've been doing in um, where she talks about the success ready network. And, and uh, most of that is kind of a shift in the state of Missouri as to having an opportunity to put, uh, the competency-based, project-based, connect to community opportunities to where you can do that good work we all know creates that student agency around, I own my learning, I own my path, then and here's my options. Um, those kinds of things I championed uh, in my other role and I continue to champion here. I think what has been a nice opportunity for me is I've had a chance to see it from the perspective of people that are not always within the ed community. So I can see where where this work is exciting and something that makes sense to people in the community. Uh, so it, it's got a lot of promise and I think it's got uh, probably one of the biggest cheerleaders for that kind of uh, uh, thing to do as far as supporting an, an education uh, agency sit, coming coming in to sit, to, uh, sit in the chair. Yeah, and you, you talked about that earlier and I thought that was really important. Like whether you're involved with schools or not, you're involved with schools. Like it affects everybody, right? And how... We connect with each other, you know, the opportunities that we create as a, a community, a society. All right, so this is a little off education topic, and, I'm, and I'll, maybe I'll have to cut this out. We'll see. So, Missouri, you got any sports teams there? You got any sports teams you like? Who's, who's your sports team? Are you, Are you joking? Are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> is that it? That's it? It's just Chiefs. Is that Are we both like diehard Chiefs fans or what? 
Oh, well, uh, well, I well, like the Chiefs a lot, but I don't. I don't. I can't say I'm a diehard. Don't tell anybody. You might have to cut yeah. that out. I'm a, I'm a Cardinals <laughs> fan though, and we do have right. some really great teams. So I, you know, Carly, you're probably better at the football. Do not tell our governor, or we will both be gone because he is the diehard <laughs> Chiefs fan. We will be great. in so right. much trouble. All right. Go. Yeah. Well, I'll be, yeah, Chiefs fan. You know, absolutely. Uh, uh, Cardinals, right there. Of course, a uh, fan of both of those. But, you know, growing up and, and having children and then I've got son-in-laws now. So I'm the person that's bringing the cheese dip. You know, I'm the one that's uh, <laughs> doing all those things. Whereas they're, you know, they're into the stats and the coach and the who's doing that, what's doing this on all of those sporting events. I enjoy them because it's part of what we do as a family. But as far as being die hard, I just like to get everybody together and have a good time. It's the so. best, right? Like, it's just, I'm like, such a, I'm like, a really, I'm into sports and I like ribbing people. So yeah, I don't know, like. But what can you like? What? How can I even make fun of the Chiefs? Right? Like I got nothing. Yes, no. Right? Like they're just too good. It's, it's just you know it's so so. This is I I I just want to thank you both for your time. I know you're super busy. Uh, I I'm like a you know when you're talking about I know there's a lot of real small communities um, in uh, you know Missouri and we think about like different opportunities and like just depending on the size of the community. I grew up in a really small town. And to think I grew up in a small town in Canada and now I'm like interviewing two commissioners of education for a state of the United States. It's like just mind blowing to me. And thank you for being so easy to talk to and approachable. Like, I think that makes such a difference, uh, you know, to the work that we do, because, you know, sometimes it's kind of stuffy and, you know, I was like, should I wear like, should I wear a tie? <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm good. Yeah, no. You're both, you're both great. Yeah. So I can't wait yeah. to join you all. Um, I can't wait to, to connect with you in person and see you, but thank, thank you both for taking the time to, to join me today. I, I, like, I really am excited about the work that's coming up this year. Yeah. Right. Thank well, you, thank George. You. We're really happy you're coming and, uh, I've enjoyed meeting with you. I'm really happy to hear how things go in the upcoming year. It's been great. Carla, up to you now. Go ahead. Absolutely. Thank you for nice to meet you, George. Look forward to, to, I can't uh, wait. Getting to see you. Uh, I've, I've actually on Amazon, I've, I've picked up a few of the things that you have written. So, Oh be... no. <laughs> so if I get uninvited, that's why no. that's what happened. Like, oh, no, no. I, I think that uh, <laughs> you hit a spark, you hit a spark, George, in uh, connecting with educators. And it's that kind of thing that you need, as you know, you've been a classroom teacher, you've been a yeah. principal, you get it. So I appreciate the work you do. Thank and you. I think as a closing remark, frankly, uh, Margie has teed us up for some really good things to happen in the state of Missouri when it comes to how we provide services to kids. And I'm looking forward to what we're going to be able to do. Ah, I so. love it. I love it. Well, thanks so much. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day.